Hello everyone, welcome back to DevWave Diaries. If you're looking to level up your web development skills, you're in the right place. Today I'm going to show you how to create this card scrolling animation using GSAP. Let's get started. Let's begin by creating a div with the class name container. Inside this container, we'll add another div with the class name card1. Within this card1 div, we'll place an image tag for the image, followed by an h1 tag, where you can write any heading you like, for example I write supercar. After that, we'll add a p tag, and inside it, we'll insert some placeholder text using lorem 10. Now, let's copy and paste the card1 div 4 more times. You can quickly do this by using the keyboard shortcut Alt plus Shift plus down arrow. Next, we'll update the class names of the duplicated card1 divs. Change the second one to card 2, the third to card 3, the fourth to card 4, and the fifth to card 5. This will help distinguish each card individually. Now for the image tag, add any image link you prefer to the SRC attribute. Once you've done that, we can proceed to the next step. As you can see, now I've added all the image links to the SRC attributes of the image tags. Now, open the browser, and you will see all the images and text displayed on the page. Next, let's add the GSAP CDN to our HTML code. Open your browser and search for GSAP CDN. Then, go to the CDNJS website to find the appropriate link. Now, on the CDNJS website, copy the first GSAP script tag. Then, paste it in your HTML code right before the normal script tag. Then again, return to the CDNJS website and copy the scroll trigger script tag. After that, paste it into your HTML code, ensuring it's also placed before the normal script tag. This is the only HTML code we need for this animation. Now, let's close the CDNJS website and move on to the CSS. First, let's create the CSS boilerplate code. We'll set the margin and padding to zero to remove any default spacing around our elements. Next, we'll apply box sizing, border box which helps us manage the width and height of our elements more easily. Finally, we'll choose a sans serif font for a clean and modern look. Next, let's add styles to the HTML and body elements. Set their width and height to 100%, ensuring they take up the full viewport. Then, set the background color to black using hash 000. Now, let's style the container div. Set its width to 100% and give it padding, 15vh, to create some vertical space. We'll use display, flex, to enable Flexbox, with Justify Content, Center, and Align Items, Center, to center the content both horizontally and vertically. Set the Flex Direction to Column to stack the items vertically, and use Gap, 1 or EM, to add some space between them. Now, let's style all the cards, Card 1, Card 2, Card 3, Card 4, and Card 5. Now, set their position to Sticky and the top to 15VH. We use 15VH for the top position because earlier we applied padding, 15VH, to the container div, ensuring the cards stay aligned properly within that padding. Next, let's add some additional styling to the cards. Set their width to 26 REM, and add padding of 7 REM, 1 REM for a nice spacing inside. Give the background a dark color using background, hash 2E251E. Use display, flex, with flex direction, column, to stack the content vertically, and center everything with align items, center. Set a gap of 1 REM between the items, and give the cards a smooth, rounded look with border radius, 25 pixel. Finally, set text align, center, to center the text. Now, let's style the image tag. Set its width to 13 REM for a balanced size, and apply a border radius of 10 pixel to give the images rounded corners. Open the browser, and you'll see the cards displayed. As you scroll the website, you'll notice that each card moves up but stops at 15 VH from the top, sticking in place. The next card will then scroll over it, creating a layered effect. Next, let's style the H1 tag. Set its font size to 1.5 REM, give it a font weight of 600 for a bold appearance, and set the color to white for better visibility. Next, let's style the P tag. Set its color to white and add padding of 0, 1 REM to give it some horizontal space for better readability. Now, open the browser, and you'll see that all the cards are now styled properly and maintaining the sticky scroll behavior. 
Next, let's move on to our JavaScript file, where we're going to write our GSAP code. Start by writing GSAP, then type a dot. You'll see that VS Code automatically changes it to some other text. After that, press Ctrl plus Z to undo the change, and then type the dot to. Next, open parentheses and inside them, write card1, and then open curly braces. Now, inside the curly braces, type scale, 0.7. Now, open the browser, and you will see that the first card has become smaller. If you refresh the page, you'll notice that the first card initially appears at its original size, but then it quickly scales down to a smaller size due to the scale, 0.7. Next, add opacity, 0. Now, open the browser again, and you'll see that the card 1 first shrinks and then its opacity changes to 0. Now, we'll add the scroll trigger property to our GSAP animation. This allows us to create scroll-based animations. Inside the scroll trigger, set the trigger to dot card 1, which means the animation will be triggered when the user scrolls to the first card. We'll also enable markers by setting it to true. This will show visual markers in the browser, helping us see where the trigger point is for our animation. As you can see, the top and bottom texts represent the markers. These markers indicate the start and end points for the animation. Now, first comment out the first two lines of your code. Then, open the browser. You'll notice that the start point for the animation is the top point of card 1, and the end point is the bottom point of card 1. This happens because we set the trigger to dot card 1. The markers, true setting helps us visualize all the start and end points for the animation. Next, remove the comments from the first two lines. After that, we will add scrub, true, inside the scroll trigger property. This setting connects the animation to the scroll position, allowing the animation to progress in sync with the user's scrolling. As you can see, when we scroll, the animation progresses in real time, creating a smooth and engaging experience. However, we need to adjust the start and end points of the scroll animation to ensure it works properly. Next, let's add start, top 15% inside the scroll trigger. In this setting, top set the animation start point to the top edge of the card 1 element, while 15% specifies the scroll position from the top of the viewport. Now, since the animation start point and the scroller start point are set on the same line, the animation will begin as soon as we start scrolling. Next, let's add end, bottom, 15% inside the scroll trigger. In this setting, the 15% indicates the scroller end position from the top of the viewport, while bottom set the animation end point to the bottom edge of the card 1 element. Now, if you start scrolling, you'll see that the animation for card 1 is working properly. Next, copy this entire code block and paste it 4 more times by using the Shift plus Alt plus down arrow keys. After pasting, change .card1 to .card2, .card3, .card4, and .card5 accordingly. This will ensure that each card has its own separate animation. Now, open the browser and start scrolling. You'll see that the topmost card is shrinking and its opacity is changing to zero, while the next card smoothly comes over the first card, creating a beautiful card scrolling animation. Next, let's remove all the markers true lines from our GSAP code. This will clean up the code and remove the visual markers from the browser. Now, open the browser, and you will see that when we start scrolling, the topmost card is shrinking and its opacity is changing to zero, while the next card smoothly comes over the first card creating a beautiful card scrolling animation. If you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to stay updated with all our latest content. Your support helps us create more exciting and valuable videos. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode of DevWave Diaries.